You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm your host, William Cooper. Hello, folks. This is William Cooper for Swiss America Trading. I know that some of you out there have not yet called Swiss America Trading. I know that some of you have. And for those of you who have not, let me tell you what has happened with the investments of those people who called Swiss America Trading when Swiss America Trading first became the sponsor of this program. If if you bought gold, you have already realized an 11% profit clear. No problem whatsoever. If you have bought silver, silver is up. If you have bought platinum, platinum is up, folks. If you have invested in any, in any of the low-rate coins that are recommended by Swiss America Trading and that we recommend here also, you have realized a 30 percent profit. Now all of those of you sitting out there listening to this broadcast who think that uh, we're just giving you this information to make some money, let me assure you that the only thing that the hour of the time William Cooper or the Citizens Agency from Joint Intelligence realize from Swiss America Trading is zero, nothing, zip. You see, they pay for the airtime on this show. That's all we ask. That's all we want. We are not in this for profit. We are here to try to help save the Constitution of the United States of America and the Bill of Rights. Freedom. Freedom. It's slipping out of our grasp. Quickly. It's almost gone. Many of you have seen it fly already. You put the chains around your own feet. The financial community right now is in such 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 fearful anticipation of an economic collapse folks that they have just lowered the interest rates at the Bundesbank now if you understand anything about the economy of the world you know what that means you see interest rates were already lower than they have been in such a long time that nobody can even remember rates that low and they have just lowered them again. That means that the big money players, the bankers, are afraid. That means that everything that I have predicted is coming to pass right before our very eyes, and you had better pay attention. Now, I'm going to put a little humor in here. I just talked to Craig Smith at Swiss America Trading. And he told me they're issuing three new bonds. The Bush bond with 0% interest, the Quail bond with, of course, no maturity, and the Clinton bond with no principal. Now, that's funny. And we can appreciate a little joke, but at the same time, there's a lot of truth in what I just told you. There is no confidence in this administration no world leader has emerged in Bill Clinton. The United States of America may be the only superpower left on this earth to those who want to believe that, but as we're disarming, as we have taken our B-52 bombers off alert and are now scrapping them, as we are dismantling our Minuteman missiles, as we are paring down our military forces, no such no such equivalent is taking place in Russia or any of the satellites that used to make up the Soviet Union. So, folks, 
you may buy all of this baloney about the United States being the last great superpower, but I'm telling you right now, we are not. And if we continue on the road that we are on, not only are we going to have a financial collapse, but we are going to find ourselves a third-rate, third-world country very quickly. All you have to do is look around. Stop buying the propaganda. Use your own brain, your own eyes and ears, and take a hard look at what's happening. And you don't have to be very smart at all to understand that we're going in the wrong direction. Now, what this means for you personally is everything that you've worked for, you're going to lose. You're going to lose unless you take action now. Those who have already taken action are already realizing an appreciation on their investments. Now, you have to understand it's not a real appreciation because as the price of gold and silver and coins have gone up the value of the dollar has gone down and will continue to go down what you're doing when you make these investments is you're protecting your assets and believe me in what is coming that is the best that you can hope for at this time on your level call Swiss America trading right now 1-800-289-2646 that's 1-800-289 Two six four six. Talk to the experts there and let them show you how to protect yourself. While you're at it, mention my name, William Cooper, and they'll send you a free newsletter chock full of information that you need to know. It doesn't cost you anything to call and talk to them. They have many different investments, many that I've recommended, some that I have not, some that I do not recommend, and some that I don't know anything about. Call now. The time to act is now. Don't wait until it's too late. Don't wait until you lose everything. Call 1-800-289-2646. That's 1-800-289-2646. In the process of saving yourself and protecting your assets, you will be saving this show and freedom for the world. Call now, 1-800-289-2646. You'll be glad that you did. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to have as my special guest today, William Morgan, who is one of the members of the Citizens Agency for Joint Intelligence and has been for some time. Now that's all that we can tell you about his identity. You will hear from him his own story, what he's been doing, how he's been doing it, what kind of information he has collected for our organization, for the citizens of this country and of the world. And we're going to talk about, well, I guess uh, you just have to call it undercover operation. This man has been undercover for the Citizens Agency for Joint Intelligence. And uh, I remember several episodes of the show before, sometime during the series that we call the Mystery Schools, which we've done, uh, I believe, 19 hours of broadcasting covering that subject. I told you that we had infiltrated the Lodge, the Mystery Schools, Mystery Babylon. In fact, we have not only infiltrated it once, but many times in this country, and in lodges around the world. So the information that we're giving you on the mystery schools is not conjecture. It does not come from a bunch of people sitting around making up information. It comes from the books printed by the mystery schools themselves. It comes from our members who are actually in the lodge and we check, double check everything that they bring to us. Uh, please welcome to the hour of the time, William Morgan. Thank you, Bill. You can call me Will, and I really appreciate that gracious and honorable introduction. Well, we're certainly appreciative of everything that you've done. Uh, tell us, uh, Will, how long have you been associated with the Mystery School? For over two years now. I became a Mason in June of 1991. And uh, what happened? I mean, how did you ever even know about Freemasonry? Um, at first, before I was... Uh, exposed to your information, I was under the impression, as most people are, that they were a philanthropic organization dealing mostly with charity or possibly even in some way associated with unions. And uh, as most CAGI members have come to know, that is entirely not the case. 
did you have friends who were Freemasons? Yes, I worked with somebody who was a Freemason, and I've come to find out that that is usually the most common way that a person is exposed to the craft, the craft as they call it. So they call it the craft amongst themselves. This is not something that the public is normally aware of. What does the craft mean? What does that term mean? Well, they consider themselves craftsmen because they are building something. And uh, there have been many organizations throughout history uh, with the incredible similarities to the present modern uh, uh, cult of Freemasonry that have called themselves builders, uh, common scenes. Uh, they've associated with themselves always with the erection of a structure or the building of, of, of something that uh, people just do not understand. Uh, we've come to understand that what they are erecting is the New World Order, and they've been working on it for thousands and thousands of years. That's uh, correct. Now, did your friend or friends try to proselytize you or, or talk you into uh, joining the Lodge? Uh, no, not at all. I, uh, I must admit, I did go to them, uh, uh, and I was not entirely aware of the nature of their organization or of what was in store for me when I became a member or brother, as they call him. Now, if you had not joined Kaji, would you uh, still be sort of in the dark about the, the true meaning of Freemasonry? Or, or, or do the members really learn uh, the truth about the organization during their, their period of time there? Had I not joined Kaji, I would be as, uh, as empty-headed and as trusting a sheeple as uh, most of the Freemasons in America and across the world are today. They are not taught what the craft is about. Uh, uh, they do not question authority at all. They, uh, as a rule, and from my personal experience and observation, they obey the rules w without question and, and to the letter. Uh, now, uh a lot of people out there are going to wonder, and I know that Freemasons are going to bring this up, that if you didn't learn what you now believe that you know about the mystery schools in the lodge, how do you know that what you've learned uh, while you've become uh, a Kaji member, um, how do you know that that is true? Well, because I can verify for myself, I can uh, get up and check the facts and look and look again to verify what is going on about the mystery schools. But for what the Masons claim to be, they have absolutely no proof or evidence or uh, even works of their own hand to prove that they are actually involved in charity work. Now, when you um, began to study, you were studying actually from two sources. You were studying the mystery religion uh, in the lodge, actually, and you were studying what you were learning from, from the Citizens Agency from Joint Intelligence and trying to... Um, um, rectify the two or, or bring the two together and make it fit. Um, when did you finally decide that, uh, that what you were learning in the Lodge was really a deception? The, uh, the absolute clincher for me, what absolutely decided for me beyond a shadow of a doubt, and yes I had in my suspicion since I had, since I had very first become a member, uh, you don't take uh, blood oaths, kneeling before an altar, swearing yourself to secrecy for all time without uh, being su without the group that you're becoming a member of being suspect. Um, and uh, but you were taking you did take these blood oaths. Yes, sir. I took uh, I took all all of them, and there were many. And so by the time you reach the degree level that you are at now, you've taken approximately how many oaths? I don't even recollect. I know that there were over two dozen oaths before you can even become a master mason in a, in a blue lodge of Freemasonry, which is a bit like primary school for Freemasons. The blue lodge is where they are brought in as new members from off the street, and uh, most, most men who are involved in masonry for their lifetimes consider the blue lodge to be the heart and soul of masonry because that is where it all begins and that is where it all grows from. But isn't it true that many Masons never uh, advance beyond the third degree and, and remain in the Blue Lodge uh, forever? That is absolutely true. Uh, whether or not it's they, they do not choose to go forth or whether, or not they're, whether they're totally unaware that there is anywhere to go um, is up to personally the Mason that's involved. But many of them stay right where they're at and seem to be content with what they have. So... Uh, these master masons who claim that they know everything about Freemasonry and that they've been a, a, a master mason for 20 years, 
Uh, do they really know anything? They know absolutely nothing. They have been completely deceived from the very first day they entered the lodge. They have been lied to regularly about the nature of the craft, the work of the craft, and the charity of the craft. The own, my own lodge that I'm a member of considers its charity work for the entire last year to be the donation of $100, which is, uh, which is a little more than the dues yearly for three members. They gave $100 to a needy family and uh, through these uh, very, very shallow uh, and superficial acts, they consider themselves to be one of the greatest charity, or charity and brotherhood organizations ever to walk the face of the earth. A it, recent uh, thorough investigation of the uh, Shriners, who, who have uh, literally uh, made their reputation upon the fact that, that they contribute uh, tremendous amounts of money to charity, but the investigation disclosed that of all the money they take in, less than 3% actually goes to any charity. Were you aware of that? Uh, no, actually I was not. I'm not a member of the Shrine, but I have been exposed to some of their numbers. Um, I was hoping that it would at least be a little bit higher than that, because that's, uh, that says bad things about the, the Masons who are members of the, of the Shrine. And um, as most people know, uh, the Shrine is probably one of the largest uh, quote-unquote charity organizations that there is. You can and, and one of the richest. But most of the money seems to go back into the Lodge or to the members or to the retirement funds or to the payment of the Lodge officers. And this is something else people don't realize, that the lodge officers are paid and they have a retirement fund set aside for them. Is that true? Yes, that is true. Uh, now, this doesn't apply directly to all officers of the lodge. I myself am an officer of the lodge that I was uh, indoctrinated into, a uh, duly elected member. They, uh, uh, they operate in, in that kind of manner with elected officials that serve one-year terms. But there is an exception to this rule, and that is the secretary and the treasurer. And the secretary keeps the books, and the treasurer keeps the money. And <laughs> that points that points a very big finger as to where the true power in every lodge lies, because these these two gentlemen who held these offices usually hold them for years and years and years. And they're not elected, and they're not accountable. Is that correct? They are totally unaccountable. They uh, uh, the treasurer will give a one budget report uh, at a certain time during the year, and I listened to this report not two months ago. And uh, if, if an accountant in the business world attempted to give such a, a superfluous report to his boss, he would be fired on the spot. <laughs> now, uh, just so our listening audience realizes that, that you're not just some yahoo who walked in off the street and went through the first degree and are now on a radio program trying to tell them you know something about Freemasonry, what is the level of your of your status or your degree or, or how high have you progressed through the initiatory uh, levels? Um, it's not exactly something that any thinking individual would like to brag about, but I have shot like a rocket up the ranks of Freemasonry. Um, much like in America, <coughs> excuse me, today, uh, the Masons like to keep their members busy, busy, busy. They don't want to give them time to think about what they're doing, and they don't want to give them time to think about where they're going. They do this by ritual. All of Masonry is tied up in ritual, and you must memorize this ritual, and it is very, very extensive. Uh, each office has its own whole, whole slew of ritual to remember. To remember. Uh, but I, uh, I worked hard. I, I, uh, I've got a good memory. Um, I, uh, I rose to the ranks, and I am now a 32nd degree Mason of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, Southern Jurisdiction, United States of America. And this is the same branch of Freemasonry that Albert Pike belonged to that created the Ku Klux Klan, the B'nai B'rith, and the branch off the B'nai B'rith called the ADL, or Anti-Defamation League, is that correct? Absolutely true. Albert Pike is considered to be a demigod among Freemasons, and, uh, and actually uh, a source of light all of his own. He took uh, the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, which did exist uh, for some time before him, he took it after the, the Civil War and turned it into what it is today. He uh, incorporated uh, much of the pagan symbology into the, the degrees that... Uh, that uh, are uh, still used and practiced today. He, uh, his name is revered. I've seen a, a, a bigger than life-size bust of complete bronze of Albert Pike that was uh, created for $25,000. Uh, some of that money was mine, by the way. Uh, uh, they treat him uh, uh, next to godhood in, in, in the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. Were you aware that uh, Albert Pike was in constant communication and in concert with uh, Giuseppe Mazzini? Uh, in creating, not only creating, but Albert Pike at one time 
was the uh, sovereign grand commander of all Freemasonry in the world uh, and operated in concert with uh, Giuseppe Mazzini in control of what we now know is the world body known as the Illuminati. Um, the name uh, Mazzini is familiar to me, and I, I have come across uh, its connection to the Illuminati in my research, but no, I was not uh, personally aware, and, and this comes as no surprise, because uh, with the exception of my own personal research, most of my information comes from the archives of the lodges I have participated and visited, or from Freemasons themselves, and all information is, is questionable at best. Uh, never once, uh, with the exception of one word, have I heard any reference to the Illuminati, and yet my own research points uh, uh, exactly in their direction for the true source of uh, the Masons' power and the reason for their concealment. But no, I, didn't, I did not know about Mazzini. Do the, uh, do the members of the Lodge consider themselves to be illumined? All of them do. Uh, without even knowing the definition of the term, the true <laughs> definition of the term, they consider themselves illuminated. They, uh, they go around, they have that secret little smile, and uh, the, they generally talk, no, not generally, they always talk down about most of the other people in the world. And I've, I've even heard grown men refer to uh, uh, a fellow Americans, brothers, as uh, profane, simply because they had not advanced through the ritual of Freemasonry. Uh, I remember a friend of mine who was a young man who was not a member of the Lodge, but his father was. And he had a friend who belonged to another family who uh, was not a member of the Lodge, but owned a small business in town. And his small business was being destroyed by the members of the Lodge, simply because he was not a Freemason. And the business was going to uh, members, or, or Lodge brothers. And uh, he asked his father why his friend's family was literally being destroyed by his father and others who professed to be members of a fraternal organization existing for the benefit of the community. And his father told him, and I'll never forget this because it literally crushed uh, my friend, his father told him this, quote, if you are not one of us, you are nothing, unquote. Is this generally true? Is this the way Freemasons generally think about people who do not belong to their organization? I have personally seen Masonry interfere with family ties before. Uh, and yes, this is just how they look at the world. They consider the world to be profane, unilluminated, uh, and, and this just goes hand in hand with the general attitude that is conveyed by all Masons that they are on their road to their their own form of godhood and uh, uh, this manifests itself in in severe racism for for all the, the people out there that may not be too familiar with Masons or Masonry uh, and this especially goes for members of minority groups who have often and usually continue to be excluded from Masonry and especially for women uh, I'm here to tell you that you are not welcome in the Lodge. You never will be and you never have been welcome to the Lodge. This especially goes for blacks, in spite of the uh, the Prince Hall masonry, which is the biggest joke and the biggest scam and the biggest insult to uh, any single race I've ever seen, uh, and uh, and especially for women. They just they do not want you and they consider you totally ineligible and unable to understand what they do. You told me something the other night that I found just incredible. You said that you could go to any Prince Hall Lodge in any black community and be the doors would be open to you and you'd be welcome but if they tried to if one of those uh, members or brothers of the lodge or the prince hall lodge came to your lodge and, and tried to come in and participate in these in the uh, ceremonies or, or uh, whatever you call them uh... what would happen <laughs> It wouldn't happen. It just simply wouldn't happen. I, as a Caucasian Freemasonry, can visit any Prince Hall Lodge in the country and as far as I know in the world. I can also visit any lodge, period, uh, across the world. I, uh, I've been told through my initiation that, I've been, that I am welcome in any lodge, but uh, this just does not apply to blacks, no matter that even if the ritual that they go through, and I do not know this for, for certain, but I know it's similar, but even if the ritual were exact, even if the same form of quote-unquote illumination that they underwent was exact, they could not ever, and I sit in a lodge with Caucasian Freemasons. I've never seen a black Freemason sit in a lodge among Caucasians, and uh, I, I, <laughs> I don't think I will. Equal opportunity and affirmative action laws are just completely ignored and uh, considered uh, frivolous and a joke by so, all Freemasons. So the New World Order that they're bringing into being is going to be racist? Entirely. It has, Aryan, it has an Aryan background, and that is where it comes from.
and, and that's been borne out by our research. Why then would the black community form their own lodges and support the bringing about of a new world order that is going to relegate them back into slavery? And I might add, along with the rest of us who, are, who, are, who don't belong to this uh, religion, and it is a religion, why would they participate in something like that? Well, as you've told me yourself, uh, and uh, most people will understand this, the world loves a mystery, and you can control the masses by dangling a secret like a carrot in front of their nose and promising them the answer to that secret if they just merely do what you say and, and, and work for you. Uh, this, together with man's own fallible, entirely fallible human nature and uh, the, the selfishness of man and the ego of man, uh, they want to be something. They want to be better than than the people around them that they see. And since they have been told straight out that they can never advance to the ranks of Caucasian Freemasons, they have settled for just being better than their own people and excluding uh, other blacks from joining their own lodge. So one of the holes that Freemasonry has over people is that ordinary people, whether they be black, white, Cauc uh, oriental, Hispanic, doesn't matter, they want to be part of the elect. Is that true? Exactly. That They want to join the elite. They, they'd like to look down on their fellow man. Okay, but and now if nobody coerced you, nobody proselytized you, how did you get into the, the lodge? I, uh, I went to the door and I knocked on it. It's time for our break, folks. Don't go away. I'll be right back after this very short pause. Hello, folks. This is William Cooper once again for Swiss America Trading, our sponsor. You know, if it wasn't for Swiss America Trading, you wouldn't be listening to this program right now. In fact, nobody would. We wouldn't be on the air. We wouldn't even have known about this station. You see, we're not radio people. We're information junkies. We have the largest intelligence gathering operation under civilian control in the world. We don't tell anybody what to do. We don't hold any meetings. We don't march around with guns. We don't care if anybody has guns or not. We just collect information and disseminate it to people, put the puzzle together to try to wake up the sheeple of the world so that we can save the Constitution of the United States, the Bill of Rights, and freedom for all peoples all over the world. That is our function. The people of Swiss America trading are just like us. They care about this country. They care about freedom. They want to survive what's coming. Now, if we all wake up, nothing bad ever has to happen to anybody. But look around, folks. What do you see out there? I'll tell you what I see. I see a great herd of sheeple marching to the slaughter. And on the way there, they always get sheared, don't they? Well, you know, if you'd called Swiss America Trading in order to find a way to protect your assets against what's coming that will mostly be brought about by the abdication, ignorance, irresponsibility, and stupidity of this great herd of sheeple, if you had called Swiss America Trading when they first began to sponsor us, and it wasn't very long ago, folks, believe me. In fact, just in the last three weeks, whoever has made an investment in gold through Swiss America Trading has already realized an 11% profit in three weeks. The people who made some other investments with Swiss American uh, Trading have realized a 30% profit since they began sponsoring this program. What's happening in the world today confirms my predictions that I have given you. And remember, I was accurate to the month when this recession would start. I told you that it would advance into a depression, which we are in now, and that by the third quarter of 1993, we would be in serious trouble. No world leader has emerged in Bill Clinton. The financial markets of the world are shaky. The international banking community is scared. And to prove that, to prove that, we're making this broadcast, we're recording it actually on the 12th of May, folks. And the Bundesbank has just lowered the interest rates once again. All time lows. Nobody has ever seen anything like this before. It is a vote of no confidence. Why? Well, if you were to translate it into bonds, you could say there was a bush bond that would have realized 0% interest, a quail bond, which would have had no maturity, and a Clinton bond, which has no principles. So, folks, 
do it now. Call 1-800-289-2646. You've all asked me over and over again how to save your assets. The time to act is now. Call 1-800-289-2646. That's 1-800-289-2646. Tell them that you listen to the hour of the time. Mention my name, William Cooper, and they will send you a free newsletter. It doesn't cost you a penny. Chock full of information that you need to know. Call now. Don't delay. Call now, folks. Don't wait until it's too late. Call 1-800-289-2646. That's 1-800-289-2646. In protecting yourself, you are helping to save this program, the hour of the time, freedom for the world, and hopefully we can all march into the future with a good future for our children and grandchildren. If we don't all wake up, that's not going to happen. And if you don't call Swiss America Trading, you're not going to be able to protect your assets. So do it now. 1-800-289-2646. And you'll be glad that you did. We're back in the studio, folks, with William Morgan, a CAGI member who has infiltrated the Lodge. Now, this man is no dummy. You have to understand, within two years, he has risen from entered apprentice to 32nd degree Freemason of the Scottish Rite of the Southern Jurisdiction. Now, that's uh, quite a distinction within the Lodge, isn't it? Um, well, yeah, it can be considered as such. It, it does get a, a measure of respect from uh, those who never advance past the third degree of Master Mason. And what is the next step? Um, after the 32nd degree, there is publicly known only one more degree uh, of uh, Freemasonry, and that is the 33rd degree. And you said publicly known. Does that mean that there's more? I suspect that there is, that there, there really is more. Do, do you know that for sure? No, I do not. I do not know it for sure. I've, uh, I've heard, um, there's a man by the name of Reverend Jim Shaw who was a 30, well he actually still is by a Masonic law, who still is a 33rd degree Freemason. And uh, when he became a 33rd degree, he knew a, another Mason who was going through the same ritual who said that uh, he was going to advance even further because he had professed a support for the Luciferian doctrine that they preach. So what you have just said, this is coming from your mouth, a 32nd degree Freemason of the Scottish Rite. You have just said, I didn't prompt you, I didn't ask you the question, in fact you just surprised me because I was going to lead up to this, but you just said the Luciferian Doctrine. Can you explain that? I can explain that absolutely. Masons uh, believe in light. It is, it is a priority part of their entire ritual. Now light uh, to a Mason symbolizes knowledge and also intellect. Uh, and if, if you've paid attention to the Mystery School broadcast, you know who the patron god of uh, intellect is. It is Lucifer. And in fact, his very name means the farrier or the bearer of light. Luce is Latin for light and fair for farrier. Uh, this is the true god of Freemasonry. And this is also, uh, to my great shame, the god that I uh, knelt at the altar before and swore my blood oath to. But when you did this, were you aware that you were swearing your blood oaths to Lucifer and not to the God of the Christian Bible? Absolutely not. Everything about Masonry says and, and uh, publicly says that their God is the same God as any God, the God of Hindus, the God of Arab, the God of Christians. Uh, but, but it's just not so. It, it's a lie and it's a scam. And all you have to do is study paganism, nature worship, and the mystery religions of Babylon to see who that real God is. So you have done this study on your own, and you've uh, ch you've checked out the uh, the publications and the doctrines and the uh, symbology within your own lodge, and you've arrived at the conclusion that the God of Freemasonry is who? The God of Freemasonry is Lucifer, who is actually Satan, uh, cast from heaven for one specific reason, and that is because he, like many other Masons, sought to attain godhood in his own time. And isn't that really the goal of Freemasonry, is by their works they will become God? Exactly. It is a matter of work. Salvation has nothing to do with it. There is no repentance of sin, and in their minds mankind was never separated from God, but is able to be an equal to or superior to God. Now, mind you, folks, I sincerely believe in the Constitution of the United States of America. This is not a religious program, irregardless of what you may think you are hearing. Uh, and I'm not making judgment on any of this whatsoever. I believe that anyone has the right 
under our Constitution to worship at any altar that they wish to worship at. I do not agree with this Luciferian doctrine. I do not worship at that altar. Uh, the only thing that bothers me in the performance of their religion is that they are attempting to control and manipulate the rest of us into a one-world totalitarian socialist government with a one-world religion that we will all have to bow down to with Lucifer or Satan as the head of that religion, actually uh, incarnated in a human body, they intend to install Lucifer upon the throne of the world. Is, is, have, have you found any, any credence for this? I found great credence for this, and the best place to go to confirm this is just pick up the book Morals, pick up the book Morals and Dogma by Albert Pike. He himself will state, number one, that masonry is a religion, and number two, that Lucifer is involved. That is all I needed to confirm my suspicions, and it should be all that is needed to confirm the suspicions of all the other Masons that are out there wandering in darkness thinking that they are living in illumination. So free ma most Freemasons, do they really believe that Freemasonry is a Christian organization? Um, no, no, they, they really don't. Uh, they may themselves be Christians and most in America are, but uh, uh, it is a strict rule and law of the Lodge written into their own constitutions that no discussions or debates concerning religion or politics ever be brought into the Lodge. They do not want your Christianity broadcast. They do not want it uh, uh, mentioned at all. In fact, I have a personal friend of mine who is a police officer in the Lodge, of which I am a member, and when he was asked in whom he put his trust, he said the Lord Jesus Christ. And from that day forward, even though he's a law enforcement officer and vitally important to the New World Order, he has been ostracized, and he has been left out of many of the activities that got me to where I am in the craft today. And I do not think that he will be even allowed to progress any farther because of that. In fact, I think you told me the other night that uh, that, that was the first time that you had ever heard the name of Jesus Christ mentioned in that lodge <laughs> ever. And uh, is, is that true? Absolutely. Or any other lodge, or any Masonic publication, or any writing, or even any words out of another Freemason's mouth. It is just not part of their vocabulary. In fact, I have very firm beliefs that the name itself brings actual pain to their ears. Um, now, we know that the lodge will welcome anyone who attends any church, synagogue, uh, temple, cathedral, in, it belongs to any religion whatsoever, um, and, and uh, but we know that Freemasonry is a religion because we've studied it, and we have people like you who are a Freemason at, at a very high degree and have confirmed it, and their own writing confirms it. Albert Pike has stated it in writing in his book Morals and Dogma, and in others of his writings, I might add, and uh, Manley P. Hall has uh, has confirmed that. Um, so if Freemasonry is a religion. Yet they accept members, people who go to other churches in the in the community, in many different religions that have doctrines that that don't agree at all. Uh, how can they rectify that? I mean, how can you explain this? How can this be? Uh, it just is, and any Mason that holds his religious convictions dear and becomes a member of the Lodge is in direct conflict with his own beliefs and, and his, own, uh, his own faith. It, they, they, the two cannot go together, have never been able to go together, and I don't think they ever will be. And uh, I'd like to ask all of my, well, I'd just like to tell all of my uh, brothers in the Lodges out there, how can you possibly believe that Freemasonry is not a religion? You meet in a Masonic temple, you knelt at a Masonic altar with the Holy Bible or in other countries a different holy book, the Koran or, or many other texts, you knelt there and swore your blood oaths in the name of a deity and quiet respect is demanded in any and all lodges all over the world just like in any temple. You have been living a lie and if you don't wake up pretty soon the New World Order will turn around and eat your lunch for you. Uh, isn't it a fact that, that they believe they're going to be an integral part of this new world order, however most of them uh, really will not be? This is the great joke. This is the punchline to the whole affair. They believe and see themselves as the priest and the priesthood of the new world order. They think that when all things start falling apart, that they are going to be the ones that rise up phoenix-like out of the ashes, bring the world together, and deliver them into the hands of Lucifer. Like I said, they, 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 uh, they consider themselves builders, and what they're building is the New World Order, and it's being erected like a prison around us even as we speak, and the capstone, and uh, you ought to take a look at the Great Seal of the United States to uh, get a feel for this, the capstone of the, of the New World Order 
of the building that they're creating is actually Lucifer himself. And is, isn't that the symbol of Lucifer, the all-seeing eye above the the pyramid, the symbol of light? It actually began as the symbol of the sun, which was the symbol of the light, which was the symbol for Lucifer. And over the years, it evolved into an eye. Uh, Christians are told that that is the the eye of God, but nobody ever <laughs> bothers to ask which God or who. You know, what's the name of this God? Uh, and you know, if if a Muslim were to ask in the Middle East, they would say it's the eye of of God, and they would think that it was the eye of Allah. Uh, and, and in the uh, Far East, somebody might think it was the eye of Buddha. Uh, but this is never explained. In effect, it really began representing the sun. It became the eye. The sun has always been the representation of wisdom or the intellect or knowledge, which is all the Luciferian doctrine. It is the symbol for the light, Lucifer, the fallen angel, the Luciferian philosophy. Uh, these are these are facts. This is just the way it is. I'm holding in my hand this very moment a official Masonic medallion that is handed out to many Masons as a gift, especially at entered apprentices. At the very top and taken up the the, the, the main position in this medallion is the all-seeing eye. Uh, and this eye is, just as uh, Bill Cooper has said, a combination of the eye of uh, quote-unquote God, and I stress that quote-unquote more than any other, um, and also it is the, uh, the, the sun. It is a symbol of sun worship. The eye that I'm seeing, the lashes on the eye on this medallion that I'm holding are actually the rays of the sun coming down to uh, illuminate the fellow Masons. It is, it is more than just a religion, as Albert Pike has professed. It is the oldest known religion. It is a pagan religion of sun worship. It is nature worship, and it is incredibly dangerous to free-loving people everywhere. You wanted to read something from a book that you have there. This is a book that I highly recommend that everybody in the listening audience must read this book. You must read this book. You can find it at most uh, religious bookstores, Christian or otherwise. Uh, they usually stock it. Uh, it's called The God Makers, The God Makers, by Ed Decker and Dave Hunt. And let me see who the publishers are here. Harvest House Publishers, Eugene, Oregon, 97402. That's Harvest House Publishers, Eugene, Oregon, 97402. Again, the name of the book is The God Makers by Ed Decker and Dave Hunt. This book truly will open your eyes. Uh, you wanted to read something from that book. Uh, yes, sir. I, came, I was reading this last night, and it just stopped me in my tracks. I'm at page 60 of The God Makers, and the chapter entitled The Mormon Dilemma. And this book is about the Mormons, and, and once you begin reading it, you'll see through the mystery schools just how close Freemasonry and Mormon, Mormonism actually is. The uh, subtitle of this part is called The Pagan Connection Again. I'll read it quickly. As C.S. Lewis and a number of other experts have concluded, there are only two religions in the world, Christianity and Hinduism or Paganism. One teaches that we are separated from the one true God by sin, and that God became a man to die for our sins. The other declares that men are not separated from God, but that each person has within himself the power to overcome evil and thus to become God, or at least a God with a small g. Hinduism, or paganism, embraces and absorbs everything except biblical Christianity, which is its only genuine rival. Although it uses Christian language to disguise its paganism, just as many Masonic lodges do, Mormonism is le less Christian than it is Hindu. The basic dilemma faced by every Mormon is the direct result of its Hindu roots. In the Bhagavad Gavita, Krishna declares that he comes forth to save the righteous and to condemn the sinners. This is exactly the opposite for the biblical Christ who came to save sinners. The great complaint of paganism and all occult secret societies of which I am presently a member is that whereas one must be worthy to join them, Christianity deliberately embraces the unworthy. And to prove my worthiness to join the lodge, I had to go ask, ask them to become a member. Uh, at the time that I joined, it was against the Constitution's bylaw, the Constitution of Masonry, I should stress, for any Mason to come to me at profane and ask me to join. And in, in effect, actually, isn't the Mormon church just another branch of the old mystery religion of Babylon? It can be nothing else. They have three degrees. They have ritual that they adhere to. They are sworn to secrecy with blood oaths inside of a temple. They have a structural hierarchy that is in the structure of a pyramid, and uh, all those that are initiated into this temple ritual seek nothing else but to climb the pyramid. The reward, the carrot that is dangled in front of their nose to keep them working hard, 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 is that they will experience and uh, attain godhood for themselves 
and and many of the rituals that are practiced in the temple are the exact same rituals that are practiced in the Masonic temple. I cannot personally confirm this, but the research that I am involved in at this time supports this, and also the research of experts who are, are, are far better and far more along in their work than I am uh, totally supports this claim, uh, and you should verify it for yourself. Absolutely. You know the, uh, the warning that we always give on this show, don't believe anything that you hear on this show or any other show or from the president or Dan Rather or anyone until you check it out yourself. Uh, one thing that I also want to make clear that we have nothing against anyone. We have nothing against people who want to worship in the Mormon religion or the Catholic religion or go to a temple and worship Buddha. We believe in the Constitution, but we also believe that everyone should know what they're getting into. We also believe that if these people are involved in subverting the freedoms of others and bringing about a one-world totalitarian socialist government, which we have confirmed that they are, then it is our business and our duty to stop them. Bingo, Bill, and you've hit upon something that, that is a catch-22 for all Masons. Part of the blood oath says that you can never, and you must swear this on penalty of very painful and bloody death, that you will never, ever release any of the secrets of Masonry to a member of the profane, to somebody out there in the big world. Uh, but when you become a Mason, and as I did, I always ask questions wherever I go. I asked some hard questions, and I got nothing. There were no answers forthcoming. They looked me straight in the eye, and they said, I can't tell you. How do you rectify what you're doing on this show with the oaths? that you took uh, saying that you can't do this. Well, um, uh, we've discussed this, and uh, I have had some personal dilemmas that I've had to face, but uh, I genuinely believe that when they do not tell me the whole truth about what I'm getting into, in fact, when they deliberately mislead me and deceive me about what I'm getting into, that that must totally uh, invalidate the contract or the oath of which I've sworn. Uh, it just cannot be any other way. They have lied, and I have been uh, I have been honest, and I have been forthcoming to them, but they have not returned it as such. And I found myself in the same position, folks, because when I was uh, in the military, and specifically with the Office of Naval Intelligence, I had to sign security oaths saying that I would never talk about anything that I was involved with. Uh, but later, when I began to realize that I was going to have to, uh, I also understood that the only things that I would talk about were those things that the intelligence community, the military, those in the government were doing, were doing to destroy the sovereignty of the United States of America, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and to bring about, really, a traitorous new government, uh, the New World Order, and that I was not going to be involved in any traitorous activity, and my first and only loyalty was to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights of the United States, and not to some phony uh, uh, manipulation called a security oath, which, which many people are trapped under, thinking that they cannot talk about many of the things they participated in that are actually destroying this nation, destroying the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. These people are traitors, and I could not be a traitor, nor will I ever be. Um, what do you feel about this new world order that's coming? It makes me want to vomit. You're absolutely right. They are traitors. They have turned their backs on their people. They have turned their backs on their country. They have turned their backs on their family. They are living a lie, and it's not going to turn out exactly how they think. They are like the cops, the police officers in America that are deliberately destroying the Constitution and treating their own people as an enemy. They can't be a cop forever. Neither can you be a practicing Mason forever. One day that protection that you cherish so much must end, and when it does, does, it will turn around and it will gobble you up like it's gobbling up so many other people right now. Well, not only that, but many Americans are, are waking up. The patriots in this country, the people who really understand and love the Constitution and Bill of Rights, are going to have an awful lot to say about what's happening. And, of course, uh, there are other people like uh, me, uh, like you. Uh, we have a, uh, the largest civilian intelligence gathering organization in the world operating full-time uh, breaking this uh, secrecy down, bringing together the truth. And uh, now we're running out of time for another episode of The Hour of the Time, folks. I want you to remember, we love you, we care about you, or we wouldn't be doing this. Good night. God bless you. And remember this.